Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you one of the most powerful keyword and market research tools available for Amazon sellers. It's called the Search Query Performance Report and any brand registered seller can access it for free. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use it to increase your market share and boost your advertising. Let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to know is where to actually find the Search Query Performance Report. So the first thing is log into Seller Central, of course. After that, if you already have the brand analytics tab highlighted over here, just click into that. If not, go into this menu, go into brands and click on brand analytics. I already have this loaded up in a new tab. So once you're there, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to go into search analytics and you're going to select search query performance report. I already have this again open up for us already. And you're going to arrive at the search query performance report right here. This is what it looks like. Basically, the way this works is it will show you the search terms that you're currently showing up for. It will show you the volume that these search terms get in terms of like searches per month. It will show you total clicks they get, the total impressions they get, the total add to carts they get, and also the total purchases they get. Then it shows you your share of these purchases, add to carts, clicks, and impressions. So it's pretty comprehensive. You can look at this on a brand view or on an ASIN view. So you can either do it for your entire brand you just select your reporting range over here. You have weekly, monthly, and quarterly. And you can specify the specific time period that you want to see. Or you can go into ASIN view. Select the ASIN that you want. Right, so I'm just going to go in and we'll select one right now. Right, so I just picked this one. I just picked monthly. I picked 2024. And I want to look at April. Right, then it will load in the search queries for me. So for the ASIN view, you usually have a maximum of 100 search queries. And then for brand view, you can have up to 1,000. Right? This covers performance from both organic and sponsored ads, clicks, impressions, and everything else. This is pretty comprehensive, and it gives you a good idea of how you're performing. Okay, and where this gets interesting is that you can compare your brand share for each given metric with another metric, and you can compare it to how the market is performing. So over here, for example, I can see that we are getting 5% of all of the impressions, right? And 7% of clicks. So my brand share on clicks is higher than my brand share on impressions, which means that my click-through rate is above the market average, right? Because I'm getting 5% of impressions, I'm getting 7.5% of clicks. So that means that for each impression I get, I'm getting more clicks than all of the other products that are out there on average. After that, my add to cart rate is even higher. So I'm getting an 8.66% add to cart rate. That means my conversion rate of click to add to cart is again higher than what the market is getting. So that means I'm performing better than average. Right? After that, my purchase rate is almost 11%. It's 10.69%, which means my conversion rate from add to cart to purchase is again higher than the market average, which means my click-through rate is better than average and my conversion rate is better than average. So my product is either more relevant than everyone else for this search query, or I'm just performing better because I have a good product, good listing content, good reviews and everything else. So this is a search term that you're going to want to focus a bit more on because I can see over here, like I'm only getting 5% of impressions. So only 4.4k impressions uh, for this week. Whereas I could be getting something like 6 or 7k. And I want to push harder on this because I know that I'm performing better than everyone else. So this is a keyword that I want to push harder on, right? We also have another example over here. You can see for this search term, water labels, waterproof labels. The brand share is 4.69% for impressions. For clicks, it's 7.72%, which is a bigger difference. So that means my click through rate here is a lot higher than average. Then my add to cart rate is about 7.75%, which means I'm just about average compared to everyone else. And my purchase rate is 9.55%, which means my conversion rate at the end of the day is still higher. This again means that my click through rate is better, my conversion rate is better. I can number one, be performing very well on this with ads if I increase my ad spend. And number two, since my metrics are favorable, Amazon's gonna want me to rank organically for this. Right? So this is another hack. So this is something, again, you're going to want to pay attention to. The opposite of this would be like a search term where you're getting a lot of impressions and a lot of clicks, but you're actually converting worse than average. 
So you're getting a lower click-through rate, a lower conversion rate, and you're spending a bunch of money on ads. So that's something you'd want to pull back on. Uh, this also gives you a pretty good idea of how much room you have for growth. So if you're performing this well in your metrics, you're only getting like 1, 2, 3, 4% of all the clicks and impressions. That means you still have room to grow. Like going from 4 to 7% of impressions isn't crazy. And it also means that you're going to get significant growth. Because that could mean like an extra 75% in revenue growth if you're able to get that additional visibility across all of your relevant search terms. So this is something that you want to focus on a lot. Uh, you can play around with the reporting ranges if your search terms are low volume. Like for example, you only have like a couple clicks each week or something. You could probably increase the time period so that you could get some more relevant data and see if what you have is actually statistically significant. Obviously, you, may, you might be able to guess based on the keyword what ASIN it refers to, but it's always better to go into ASIN view and figure that out. That's the gist of it. Over here, the last thing you're going to want to look at is the actual total count and the brand count. So over here, you can see we're getting like 5% of impressions, which is around 4.4K, and we're getting 140 clicks which is good. This is statistically significant. Whereas over here, for example, if you scroll down or even go to the third page, whereas over here, for example, the search term laundry room sticker labels only has 11 clicks and 115 impressions on the brand count. And therefore, whatever number we have over here for the purchases, which is 100% brand share for us, which isn't realistic. So to make sure everything's statistically significant, Make sure the search term you're looking at has a high search volume. Make sure your brand count on impressions and clicks makes sense. And make sure that your brand share for conversions and the difference between your brand share for clicks and conversions also makes sense. Because if you had like five clicks and you have like a 2% share of clicks and then your share of conversions is like 20%, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. You could have just gotten lucky on these five clicks. So you have to make sure the volumes make sense. And if they don't, like play around with the time periods Instead of weekly, do monthly. Instead of monthly, do quarterly. If you don't have enough data this quarter, go back another quarter, see what the data was back then, combine the two, figure out what your numbers would have been over half a year, and so on. So you want to make sure these numbers are relevant. And then based on that, you can add those keywords into your advertising, and you can increase your spend on them, and you can expect to see higher sales and a higher share. And obviously, you can track this over time by checking the subsequent weeks, months, and quarters. And then since you have better performance and better metrics, you can also expect to see an improvement in organic. So this is very simply how you use this report. The final step, if you want to use this more efficiently, is to just export this and use it on a Google Sheet. You can just click Generate Download and select Simple View. Generate Download over here then just download the thing and export it. I already have mine open. So I have this here in this Google Sheet. I already did some cleanup you're going to find some metrics that aren't there on the uh, web page view. So you're going to find like the average price uh, for each click, the average price for each add to cart and a bunch of other metrics. I just delete these for now because this doesn't affect our keyword research and I'm left with the same exact metrics that are on Amazon, right? So anything extra, you just delete it up front. After that, I generally just go through all of these and I add a filter. And you want to filter anything that is low volume. So you're going to go to clicks, brand count, and then condition. Scroll down. Less than, this depends on the time period I have weekly. So I'm going to say less than 25. I'm going to hit OK. And you can just go and select all and delete. For you, I probably recommend doing monthly or quarterly. This is just like an example sheet. Uh, and you could do less than like 30, 40, 50, and then just delete all, right? And then you only keep the things that are high volume. We have quite a few over here, so it might take a second to scroll through this. So I'm just going to speed it up for you. I'll meet you guys at the end. All right, so once you select all, I generally just delete selected rows. Then I remove filter, and you're left only with the search terms that are high volume, right? Again, I'd recommend using one of the bigger time periods. You're going to end up with more search terms. But for the weekly, this is what we have. We have around 26 different search terms. After that, you want to go in with some if statements. So you can find out which ones have a better click-through rate and conversion rate than the market average. For the if statements, you're just going to make these based on the brand share of impressions and clicks. And then the brand share of clicks and purchases. So what I do 
is I go to brand share clicks and I just create a column to the right. So over here, I do have mine ready. So if J3 is greater than F3, with J3 being my brand share for clicks and F3 being my brand share for impressions, then I'm going to say true, right? And if it's not, I'm going to say false. So over here, if this says true, that means that I have a better click through rate than average. If it says false, I have a worse click through rate than average. And you can just take this and you can copy paste this across everything. And you'll quickly find which ones have a better click through rate than average. You can then just take this and do the same exact process for uh, purchases, brand share. And then you can compare that to clicks, brand share. All right, so you can just create a column here to the right. And I'm just going to add this in. And I'm going to say if S3, if S3 is greater than uh, J3, then I'm going to say true. And if it's not, I'll say false. All right, and then I just apply it to the rest. And again, anything here that says true has a better conversion rate than average. And anything here that says false has a worse conversion rate than average. Then after that, you can just apply a filter to all. Right? You can filter out false here. You can just hit OK. And you're left with anything that has a better conversion rate than average. And then you can filter out again false here. And now you're left with anything that has a better click through rate and a conversion rate than average. You're left with these five search queries. And then from there, I just take these and I put them into a tracker sheet. Right? And I put all of my different match types and targeting types. You can say SP exact. SP phrase, SP broad, then SV, and put all of the match types again, exact, SP phrase, SP broad, and then you're just going to say yes or no for whether it's in each of these, and then if it's not in one of them, obviously go and put it in. You want to cover it in all match types and all add types since you're obviously doing better than average on it. So you're going to put those in. And then if it's already in everything, like just go in and increase your bids, increase the budgets of the campaigns that they're in, create separate campaigns for only these search terms with higher budgets, higher placement boosts, and higher bids. Basically do whatever you can to increase your spend on this. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found this useful. If you need our help with PPC, feel free to reach out at www.aihello.com to claim a free audit or to claim a free month of managed service if you're spending above $10,000 a month on ads. We're going to be more than happy to help you. So reach out to us, let us know what issues you're facing, and we'll be there to serve you guys and help you guys grow your account. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.